Welcome to Backyard Safari. Today we're going to be going to three different places. A roadside ditch, which as you can see is right near a busy highway. We're going to go to a temporary pond, that is a, a pond that's not filled with water throughout the year. And we're going to go to a permanent lake. What we're going to be doing at these three places are looking at the different plants and animals that occur there. We're going to see that there's differences in the water from all three places. And because there's difference in the water, there's going to be different plants and different animals living there. One of the most important things to keep in mind whenever you go near any body of water, be it the beach, a ditch, or a pond, is safety. You've always got to be careful because you don't know how deep the water is, you don't know how fast the water might be flowing. Another thing that's important to have on hand when you go to look at a spot like this is a little field guide. This is an inexpensive golden guidebook to pond life. I recommend it very much because it'll show you just about every animal that you're going to find in a ditch habitat like this. Now what I'm going to be doing is carefully walking down here. As you can see, the bank is rather steep. I don't know exactly how deep the water is, so I'm not going to just jump right into it because I could end up over my neck. Always be absolutely sure of where you are when you enter or get close to a body of water and never go near a body of water without somebody with you, a buddy or a parent, somebody that is able to uh, pull you out if you get stuck in the mud, which happens occasionally. I'm going to get rid of the book so I don't lose it in the water. Whenever I go to look at water or animals in water, I take a tray along with me so that I can look at them up close. And I usually take a net. This is an inexpensive dip net that I use to catch up whatever might be in here. Get your sample of water first so that you have clean water to work with. Now what I see right away coming into this ditch is it's a regular roadside ditch that at one time was scoured out real clean. But you can see that nature is starting to take it over again. We've got some rushes right here. Rush is a plant that likes to be in a real wet environment. It's a round stemmed plant and it's found in ditches, ponds, and even in saltwater habitats like salt marshes. There are some other plants like this vine right here. This is a uh, morning glory vine. Looks kind of like poison ivy, but it's not. This plant right here is called pennywort. Pennywort sends out long trailing runners. And eventually, if you look further down the ditch, you can see that the pennywort's going to keep growing. And eventually, the pennywort may actually cover this entire ditch, which isn't necessarily good for the ditch. But before we spend any more time talking, let me see if we can find somebody in here. All I'm doing with this dip net is just running it through the water, through the open water, to see if there's any aquatic insects. And I don't see anything there, so now what I'll do is run the net through all these plants, the vegetation right here. And that's going to yield something. First off, a little mosquito fish, a couple of mosquito fish. The mosquito fish is a real small fish that's often called a minnow. Let me mention one quick thing here. When you're handling fish, be sure that your hands get wet first. Fish are covered, all fishes are covered with a slime. Um, most fish have scales, but that slime protects them from bacteria and infections. And if your hands are dry when you pick up a fish, you'll rub that, that, that um, slime right off of their skin, which can then open them up for serious infection later on. So keep your hands good and wet, and actually try not to handle the fish, if at all possible. But we're going to get a close look at these guys. This is a female mosquito fish right here. And there's even some snails. There are lots of different kinds of snails in the world. A lot of them live in fresh water. This one right here, a relatively small snail, looks like a giant pond snail. And it's called a giant pond snail because, relatively speaking, to other snails, it's, it's kind of big. Um, this one here is obviously pretty small. Most freshwater snails have gills, just like, uh, oh, just like, uh, no, I'm sorry, they have lungs, just like some other invertebrates. That means if kept underwater, if I were to hold this snail underwater for a real long time, it would eventually drown. So you have to be real careful about putting animals in containers that they're going to be able to live in. So if I set this in a jar full of water, it would eventually drown. Uh, marine snails, though, th those that live in the ocean, they have gills and they can stay underwater all the time. 
We'll take that guy back with us. He's actually crawling on my hand. I don't see anybody else in this first net, so we'll try again. Back over this way. Now I'm working right along the bottom, but I'm not digging it down into the mud. If I were to do that, I'd fill the net with mud, and then what would happen to the animals that might be caught up in the net? They'd suffocate in the mud. So what I'm going to be real careful about doing is just teasing the net right over the surface. Another word of caution, there are animals in here that can bite. One of them, called the uh, predaceous diving beetle, has rather strong jaws. If I just reached my hand into this net without seeing who's in there, I could get a pretty nasty pinch on the finger. So I recommend that you never reach blindly into a net. Always be sure of what's in there before you put your fingers in there. This animal right here is real small, but it's a very important animal in a ditch. It's called a damselfly larvae. The damselfly, when it's an adult, it looks just like a dragonfly, except the wings are held straight over their back. Damselflies are real common in ditches like this, so are dragonflies. The adult dragonfly and damselfly female will lay eggs in this water, and the eggs hatch out into little larvae, and they spend their life living on the plants, feeding on other animals. They're actually a predator. See if we can get something a little bit bigger here. It's amazing what you can find in a, just a regular old ditch like this. Now the mosquito fish, as I mentioned earlier, often called a minnow, is uh, not a tadpole either. It's not a frog. It's a true fish that is always small because, as its name implies, what the mosquito fish eats are mosquitoes. Now how does a little fish catch something that's normally flying around? Well, like the dragonfly, mosquito females lay eggs in the water, they hatch out into larvae called wrigglers, and the mosquito fish eats those mosquito larvae. So the mosquito fish is definitely a friend to us. We want to have them around. They're actually a natural means of controlling mosquito populations. Again, trying to keep that net up off of the bottom so that I don't scrape up too much mud. Lots of mosquito fish in here. I was hoping to find a crayfish. Let me see if I can't get one. A crayfish is an animal... Oh, there goes one. Got him. Yep. All right. Crayfish are animals that are essentially freshwater lobsters. The crayfish that live in these ditches are decomposers primarily. That is, they eat dead plants and animals, mostly plants. That's their favorite food. The plants that are found in ditches will die eventually, and if it weren't for the crayfish eating them up, this ditch would be eventually filled up with just rotting plants. So like the mosquito fish controlling mosquitoes, the crayfish helps to, to uh, control the plant growth in a ditch. Never can tell when you're just kind of blindly going along with the net what you might catch as you're scraping along the bottom and going through as I I'm trying to find a crayfish. I'm going to probably find something else. It's amazing how large some of the animals... All right. Here's somebody to look at. This is the top dog of the ditch. It's called a snapping turtle. Snapping turtles, as their name implies, can bite. All turtles can bite. Whenever you find something like this, you need to be real careful with it because you don't know how sharp the claws might be or how strong the bite might be. Snapping turtles can eat anything in this ditch. If an animal is hit by a car and washes into this ditch, this animal will eat it, eat parts of it anyway. And by doing that, they help keep this ditch clean. They don't eat very many plants. Mostly what they're gonna be eating are the mosquito fish, the crayfish, and uh, maybe some frog tadpoles that'll be in here. But some people call these a living garbage can, and I think they're more important than just that. They help control populations, keeping them healthy by removing the sick, the dead, and uh, other animals that might be diseased. So they're a valuable, valuable animal in a ditch like this. This animal here is probably five or six years old. When it's full grown, its shell will be about that big. So this is a youngster right now. Real long tail, looks very primitive. Now I'm holding it in such a way that if it wanted to, it could reach around and bite me, but 
I'm keeping an eye on its head real closely so that I don't get bitten. Handle with care if you ever find one of these. It's usually best if you leave them alone, but I just caught that one up by accident. Okay, we're back now at that second habitat I was telling you about, the temporary body of water. This, this pond right here is called an ephemeral pool. It'll dry out towards uh, middle to late summer, so that means we're not going to find any fish in here. The most common animal you're going to find in a pond like this will be tadpoles, maybe some dragonflies, uh, some mosquito larvae. Animals that can um, leave the water are what you're going to find in here. The fish can't leave water, and when this dries out, of course, they're going to they're going to disappear. If some were were introduced, if somebody released a fish in here, it wouldn't live very long. One of the important things to remember about even a temporary pool is again safety and depth of the water. You don't really know how deep it is in ponds like this because it's usually very dark water. And as you can see, just a short ways from the shoreline, it gets really quite deep. Keep in mind that boots don't keep your feet dry. They just determine at what depth you're going to get wet. So I'm going to stay right along this shoreline here because if I were to step back just a little bit, I could end up to my waist in water. What I'm looking at right in front of me, some more of that rush right here. Here's some pennywort. There are some plants growing close to the bottom here. Lots of algae in this pond. Algae is a, an, a plant that is usually real soft. Some of them are real slimy, actually, because they're so soft. The algae, which is just a simple green plant, is eaten by the tadpoles. Tadpoles in this pond include leopard frogs and toads. I just saw a number of tadpoles scurry away when I first stepped in here. You might notice, too, that I'm using a different net than the one I was using in the ditch. The reason for that is I don't want to introduce something from the ditch into this pond like a mosquito fish I didn't see. When a mosquito fish is born, it's really very small. And there may have been one on the net that I didn't see. Plants right here usually harbor some animals like dragonfly larvae. So I'm going to start by creeping up on that. There's a stick. Again, remember to try to keep your mind on what you're doing so you don't grab something that might grab back, like a turtle. I don't know that we'll find any turtles in this pond here. I feel pretty certain we're going to get some tadpoles. Yep, there's some. Oh, and a real nice dragonfly. This animal here is a larvae of a dragonfly like I was telling you about in the ditch. This animal in about two weeks maybe a week actually, is going to crawl up this stem or a stem like this. It'll crawl up onto it. Its outer skeleton, it's an invertebrate, no internal bones, is going to split right along the back and the animal will climb out backwards and hang on this branch. And there are little wing buds right here. Those wing buds expand out to be nice, clear, big, long wings. And then the adult now will fly around here eating the mosquitoes that are flying around. Right now, this animal is eating the mosquito larvae that is in this water. It's also eating small tadpoles. This is a real predator. It'll attack anything, even uh, something as big as itself. They're, they're pretty ferocious. This animal, well, it got out of the net. Let me see if I can get another one. The uh, tadpole I had with it was big enough, or actually, I should say, small enough for him to eat. There's a lot of them in here. There goes one. A lot of tadpoles in here. I see a number of very small crustaceans called copepods. Copepods and amphipods are animals that live in temporary water because if uh, they tried to live in a pond that had fish in it, the fish would eat them all up. So there's little crustaceans in here. Um, this pond filled up with winter rains. And come summertime, again, this is going to dry out. Well, I'm having a little trouble getting another tadpole. Drag through the pennywort. There's probably 10 or 15,000 tadpoles in here uh, when it's a fresh new pond. Right now, there may be 150,000. I have no way of telling. I know that there's a lot. There's a lot of tadpoles. One frog, one female frog, may produce 5,000 eggs. There's a tadpole. But my activity here on the shoreline has scared most of them away. 
That dragonfly would be very happy to grab onto a tadpole that big. This looks like a leopard frog tadpole. Wetlands like this are increasingly becoming more and more important. We're losing little freshwater ponds like this. I brought an animal with me that I want to show you that I caught it at a pond very much like this one. The spotted turtle is kind of a symbol of wetlands like this, those areas that dry out during part of the year. Spotted turtles are disappearing from our continent, from North America, because wetlands are disappearing to development. The spotted turtle in ponds like this eat dragonfly larvae and the tadpoles. There are really beautiful turtles. You can see they're given the name spotted because they have these bright yellow spots on them. Very important animal. It would be a shame to lose them, and they're rapidly disappearing. We're back at the third body of water that we're going to be talking about today. This is the pond, a permanent body of water that's actually part of a lake. And what we'll find in here is a much greater variety of animals, uh, both in different kinds and the numbers that we'll find. A moment ago, I caught up a really beautiful spider called a fishing spider. Uh, this animal is pretty common in lakes like this. And what was really neat about catching him is the, the, uh, that at the same time I caught the spider, I caught a little freshwater shrimp. And when the shrimp jumped, the spider jumped and grabbed it. So uh, this spider is going to get a, a meal that I'm sure it's going to enjoy. I'm going to set it down and uh, see what else we can catch. One of the big differences between this lake and the ditch is that the predators that you'll find in this lake can include alligators. So instead of a snapping turtle being at the top of the food pyramid, what will be at the top here could be a six or seven foot alligator. There's also herons, long-necked birds that eat fish, frogs, and other animals that live in the water. Uh, there will be yellow-bellied sliders, which is a type of turtle. And real important in this lake, trying to get through the alligator weed, is that there's going to be a lot of different kinds of fish. Not only mosquito fish, which are real common in here, but we'll find different types of sunfish, largemouth bass. There's probably even gar and bowfin, which are very primitive freshwater fishes. Here's another kind of snail. This is called a, an orb snail, because it's round in shape. We'll hold on to him for a closer look. Let me see if I can't get a sunfish though. There's lots of sunfish in here. This plant matter that you see is mostly alligator weed and pennywort. Here's a, another type of algae called Elodia, or Elodia, however you want to pronounce it. This can be very thick in growth and can actually choke a pond or a lake like this. The freshwater shrimp that I caught a moment ago is much smaller than the shrimp we usually catch and eat ourselves. It's a crystal clear animal. You can see right through it. Uh, and that is so that predators won't see them in the water. They're real hard to see. There we go. A little sunfish. Set him in water. Again, remember, if you're going to touch a fish, be sure your hands are good and wet. There it is. This is a small one, but it's real pretty. One of the things to keep in mind about a permanent body of water like this, actually a lot of people think about it right off, and that is snakes. This area here is nice and bright, so we're probably not going to find any venomous snakes. The cottonmouth is a, a venomous snake that hangs out near water, but this is too bright lit for them. They like nice, dark, shady places. They might be back in that area there, but since this lake is near a lot of human habitations, I doubt seriously we're going to find any cotton mouths around here. I'm really more concerned about just falling in the water than I am about any snakes. Lots of sunfish. Here's another one, but we've caught one just like it. A lot of mosquito fish. The plants that are here will die back a little bit in the winter time, but they're going to be strong enough to spring right back in the spring and uh, through the summer. And eventually this whole area here may be covered with plant life. What I'm trying to find right now are some invertebrates, maybe some dragonfly larvae, or uh, some damselflies. I know there's crayfish in here, and I know there are lots of turtles. So the, the real big difference between this lake and the other places we've looked at is that there's just going to be a lot more, a, a lot greater number 
of animals in here. And every time I dip the net, I'm catching a sunfish. There's another one there. So there's lots of animal life. The sunfish are small, which indicates that this area has possibly too many sunfish in it, not enough big predators like largemouth bass. The bass are out in the middle there, and they love to eat those little sunfish. Beautiful spot. I'm sneaking up on a little hatchling yellow-bellied slider. up on that log just getting some sun. This is a, a one-year-old slider. It hatched out uh, summer of last year, stayed in its nest through the fall and winter, and just emerged a little while ago, probably a month ago, was out sunning. You can see he's got a bright yellow belly called a plastron, nice beautiful green carapace. Uh, this animal is found in permanent bodies of water. You're not going to find one of these in a temporary pond. You might find one in a ditch, but it would have to be a big ditch. When this is full grown, it'll be about that big, almost 14 inches long on a big female. And when they're adult, they eat plants. At this size here, ice cream to this turtle would be uh, little dragonfly larvae, damselfly larvae, and other invertebrate animals. Earthworms would be real tasty to this guy. Beautiful little turtle. Sorry I disturbed him sitting up on his log, but he'll go right back in and resume life. Keep in mind, animals like this don't make good pets. If you catch a turtle like this, always be sure to just look at it for a short time and put it back where you found it. Um, unfortunately, many turtles go home, but they don't live very long. So it's a real good idea to always return animals where you find them. We've seen three different habitats today, all of them wetland, all of them fresh water. One thing that I want to point out, you've probably been hearing in the background a lot of car noises. That's because we're in an area that is right near human habitations. We're not out in a wilderness site. These are wetlands that are, are visited by a lot of people all the time. I need to point out two things. Be real careful when you come to wetland sites like this for your own safety, but also for the safety of the plants and animals that occur here. They can't live anywhere else. The yellow-bellied slider lives in a, t in a permanent body of water. The uh, spotted turtle lives in a temporary body of water. So we need to be very careful to protect these sites. North America has lost 50% of its wetlands in the last 100 years. We can't afford to lose any more, and it's up to us to protect them. Thanks for joining me.